Well, we're so excited and so pleased to be able to honor these distinguished educators. And uh, for the last couple of years, we have been thinking about this and talking about it and hoping that we might be able to do something to recognize all of our many alums out in the schools and agencies who have contributed so much and who have really uh, presented such a positive image of the College of Education and have been so outstanding in their commitment to education and their service to education. My next door neighbor was my first principal. And her daughter, who was a teacher in the middle school, lived next door to her. So from the very beginning, when I went to school, I rode in the car with the principal. So I was in the principal's office from day one. Well, I remember Herman. Very first time I ever met him, he was knocking on the door of the band hall at Jersey Village High School in Cypress Fairbanks Independent School District. A young kid straight out of Sam Houston State University wanting to do his student teaching in our band program. His background, experience, I think, is a reflection on the training that he got early on in his bachelor's degree and his master's degree from Sam Houston State. So this is really a recognition for everyone in the past. Uh, every administrator, every educator that has, has walked the halls at Sam Houston and walked the hill up and down. I'm just simply here as, as one of many in the legacy of, of many educators. And so for that, uh, again, I feel very honored and privileged uh, to be here today and to be receiving this honor. Because without the university, I would not be in Austin, I would not be a school superintendent, I would not have been an educator for the last 30 plus years. In watching Herman's career, he's done some very good things. He's very astute in his ability to analyze people, situations. I also will never forget such famous Smithisms as it's easier to change people sometimes than to change people, and loose lips lose jobs. Uh, your effectiveness as a leader will depend upon your ability to live with ambiguity. And when the horse is dead, for God's sake, get off. <laughs> I know personally that I will always remember, as Harry Wong said, the learner does the work. Uh, obviously, it's very humbling for your peers and, and others to elect you to something such as this. And just the fact that I was nominated itself was, was you know, excitement. I went home and told my, my wife and son about it. So just the nomination itself was an honor. There is nothing that you ask Debbie to do that she doesn't do and do well. She always puts out 110% no matter what it is. She is a heart and soul of Jane Long. She works to make Jane Long the best. One of the reasons that I nominated Debbie for this distinguished award is uh, she has the biggest heart. She truly does and she cares about each individual for who they are. She is definitely a cheerleader for each one of them. And these children here at Jane Long are very, very lucky. I graduated back in December of 1975 and have been teaching every day since then. I have enjoyed every minute of it. It is such an honor to be accepting this award on behalf of every elementary school teacher who has ever walked out of the doors of Sam Houston State University. The biggest reward I've gotten out of teaching is to be able to encourage the kids. If I can make them feel special, I get so much out of that. And that's what I always try to tell new teachers that I work with, that if you can touch a child's 
heart every day and just find one special moment to give to every child, you will in turn get so much back out of it. I think she's a good teacher because she's very creative. She even does this um, one skit where she performs as the tax fairy. So I wave my magic wand and I throw my fairy dust and I give them all kinds of things to feel good about. But the last note that I leave, even though I try to make them believe the fairy dust is really helping, is that I give them a note that says, believing in yourself is really all the magic you need. She will get us to do things that are um, sometimes out of character for us. She knows that I'll do just about anything. So she tells the kids and pumps them up for the tax test and she'll tell them, I bet we could get Miss Stevenson to uh, color her hair. And they'll all go, ooh, Miss Stevenson, would you color your hair? I said, as long as I don't have to shave it. So at one point she, um, and she made me a frame for this one too. But she said, anyone, look what people will do to get recognized. And yes, we got recognized and we were very excited. She creates that fabulous, positive environment for not only children, but all of the staff here at Jane Long. And we love her. And we are so, so very proud of her. This is my 30th year of teaching. And I have had some of the most wonderful principals to work for who have just let me soar and be the kind of teacher that I want to be and am today. I love still working with the kids. After 30 years, some teachers might say, it's about time to give it up. But every day, I tell the kids they're the reason I get up in the morning. And <laughs> y'all have to cut this part. <laughs> I've been privileged to know Joyce Eveld and work with her as a volunteer at Assistance League of Houston for over 15 years. And I'm always impressed by her professionalism and dedication to um, leadership and attention to detail, and especially her work uh, with, our, with our children. That's our, our main mission, is to help children in the city of Houston, and that's always been her focus. My friendship and association with Joyce Marie goes back a long way. Uh, she is, uh, will, has tenacity and will just hang in there until it's done perfectly. Choosing education as a profession was a natural progression for me from early childhood through uh, high school years. And ages five and six, I would line up my dolls and have daily spelling lessons, playing school. And later in high school, academic success and helping my friends study for tests and leadership positions uh, encouraged me to pursue the field of education. I remember years ago reading a book by Dr. Uh, uh, Jules Sagal called A Child's Journey. And in it, he talks about the, um, the children who are the survivors and the thing that they have found is that in, in nearly all situations there, there has been an adult in their lives who have, have, have helped them, who have given them love and, and uh, support to, to give them self-esteem and to help them make it when others can't. And I can't help but think that as he wrote that, he was thinking of people like Joyce Evell who has helped so many children in so many ways. And she has certainly exemplified what a degree from Sam Houston University has earned for her. Imagine a friend of education. I wish that uh, we could make a friend of education of every person in the United States. I just liked being with people and helping. I nominated Susan Estrada for this wonderful award because she has proven herself to be one of the most outstanding support staff members that we have had in our bilingual ESL program. She's seen as support, as a friend, as a colleague, as a 
sharing person, willing to give more than 100% of her time and effort to every child, every teacher, every administrator who needs her. Uh, she was a teacher here in Francone for more than 20 years, um, teaching second grade bilingual, as well as becoming the district's very first special ed bilingual teacher. My father was a former superintendent of schools of the Humble Independent School District, and my mother was a beloved English teacher, taught high school seniors. And so when I thought about graduating from high school and wanting to be a teacher, at first I thought, no way, I've got to do something different. I can't follow the same path with my whole family. So I went over to Sam Houston in the education department, and I met with Dr. Alberto Sandoval, who's my beloved professor, and he began to explain bilingual education. I thought, oh, that sounds pretty interesting. But there was one little detail, and it was actually a big detail, that he forgot to tell me, that all my courses, my junior and senior year, would be in Spanish. And at that point, my Spanish was not at the level that it is today. So it was quite frightening, it was quite scary, but with a lot of mentoring, with a lot of support from the professors and a lot of support from my friends, I was able to achieve that dream and become bilingual and became a bilingual teacher. When I was a little girl, she was my second grade bilingual teacher. And I came from Mexico not knowing one single word in English. But when I got to her class, I just never, I'll never forget her face and the love she had for me. If there was a question even regarding how to pay bills, how to do something at home. She was more than willing to help my parents and talk to them. She knew my mom and dad were both not very literate. She walked us through every step and she never ever felt, allowed us to feel inferior. One of the things that inspired me, just the devotion that she has for education. I would even go home and think, how does, how does someone do so much? I would come into her classroom and she was working with special ed bilingual students. She had a lesson plan for each student. One of the greatest accomplishments that I've been able to see is my students being successful. I've had many students that have come back to me and said, you made a difference in my life. And that's what teaching's about. My father was an example to me of what an administrator and educator should be. He was a former superintendent of schools, and he always told me the children matter, the teachers matter, and don't forget that. And several years ago when he passed away, it was very difficult for me to get up every morning and do my job. And I would hear this voice that would say, get up, they need you. And then six months after that, I lost my beloved sister, who was also an educator. So I would like to dedicate this to both of them for being there for me and for helping me be the teacher that I am today. I always felt like that if you looked in the dictionary under the word teacher, uh, you'd probably find uh, Bessie May Key written there. Uh, she never played favorites. She was a real strict disciplinarian, and I think people probably in the long run appreciated that. Well, I think it was my third grade teacher. Her name was Miss Verna Grace Cleveland. That may have inspired me to teach. I liked her so much and wanted to be like her. And then, too, there just wasn't much else for a little country girl to do to earn her money. I finished Groveton High School in 1924. Well, I earned a B.S. degree at Sam Houston. And then, um, let's see, that was in 1934. It <laughs> took me 10 years to get a degree teaching school in the uh, winter months and um, going to college in the summer. But in fact, this community holds her in uh, great esteem, and uh, all you have to do is go outside this building and look on the wall and you'll see her name there. And always has a sense of making 
people feel special, feel good about themselves and feel good about what they do. I was fortunate enough to have about a 40 year career here at Alvin High School and uh, whatever success I might have had, I attribute most of that to her. The Alvin ISD Education Foundation um, is managing a scholarship in, in honor of Miss Key, um, in honor of her 100th birthday, but I think more in honor of all she's done for so many lives that she's touched through the classroom and through the community. I was told if I could get a certificate that I would be given a school and during my senior year, I studied for a state examination. Someone told me that if I got a short envelope, I had failed. But if it was a long one, that meant I had a certificate. And for six weeks, I went to the post office hoping to get that long envelope. And finally, it came. <laughs> well, I nominated Miss Key because I feel like that so many people do not get the recognition that they deserve. That they have worked hard and maybe have not made a big splash, but they've been there through the years and have, and have laid foundations for students to, to build their future on. And to me, she is the one that should have got this award and did. For once, somebody listened to me. <laughs> I have Dr. Estel, I don't know if you've ever heard of him or not, signature in a memory book that I have. And he wrote um, a quotation from uh, Salutation to the Dawn from the Sanskrit. And I can still say it. <laughs> For today well lived makes every yesterday a dream of happiness and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Look well, therefore to this day. From the ancient Sanskrit.